to record. Do you see it on your end? Awesome. Oh. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jessica. Hi. I love your office there. Your oh, background. Thank- That's incredible. You were over here in a Murdoch figure. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love that. Oh, wow. That's just, crazy. A, just an FYI. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today, gentlemen. I am excited to talk to you about this movie. It blew my freaking mind. Um, you were fantastic and deserve an Oscar. I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. So love you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll send you more figures. There's a set <laughs> figure that someone sent me, actually. We've got to send you one. Oh, my God. Please do. I would love it. Um, I, I saw a team probably five times in the theater, by the way. So thank you for that. Film. Oh, that's crazy. Um, so this movie. Wow. Um, first first question is uh, you used Ted Kaczynski's own words and thoughts throughout to make this script and to create this film. What was it like going through this and through his mind and trying to, uh, you know, find his rationalizations and himself? Sean, did you want to answer that? Or Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it was profoundly helpful because when I came on board, well, when they first sent me the script for the movie, I didn't know much about the Unabomber at all. I read the manifesto and went, okay, there's way more to this guy than I knew about. And uh, I heard him speak. That was a huge uh, influence for me. I could mimic sort of the way that he spoke and his energy levels and stuff. But the, the diaries were the, were the treasure trove of information. He is incredibly honest about his feelings and his inner world and brutally honest on his failings his weaknesses, his strengths. It was, you couldn't ask for anything better to try and understand or prepare for a character with, you know, that volume of information and, and being as honest as he was. And I was just curious, Tony, when you were creating the script, how was it to, you know, go through those words and piece this together? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, a combination of needing to obviously yeah you know, put together a plot and a storyline, but also just be, you know, hit the emotional chords of what Ted was feeling. Um, so that's sort of where it was, yeah, this hybrid approach of just, you know, the story of Ted's actions mixed with, you know, what his beliefs were and, you know, and, and, and really get into his, his mind to kind of show it from his point of view. So we could kind of have this escapist journey into, uh, you know, how his outlook of the world, you know. Got it. Well, and also one thing I, I, I don't know if it's, you know, uh, Shelter, you're a likable guy and you, you just bring a humanity to every role you do. You made him very sympathetic in a lot of ways, but it was so complex because he knew what he was doing was wrong. And, but you found this humanity in him and this kind of tragedy to his life. And I was just curious if you could talk about that complexity and, and sort of like you can tell there's some mental illness that pervaded him that no one really caught on to that if someone had gotten him help, this could have stopped. I look, my experience, I mean, he was he, you know, he's been sort of written off in the press, certainly at that time as a kind of a psychopath, crazy, mentally ill guy. I didn't experience that, it, you know, through the, I mean, I'm not a, you know, a professional in the field, but as an actor, as a person who's looking at human behavior, I experienced him as an extreme person, as an extremist, someone, you know, which a lot of leaders are. He speaks in his writings, for example, of either living off the grid or becoming a dictator to try and overthrow society. So on the one hand, he's a super recluse, but on the other, there was a part of his personality that almost went the other way. He can speak when you listen to his interview speaking in jail. He speaks very eloquently and very interestingly. He'd be an interesting guy to listen to making his arguments. So for me, it was much more about, I feel more like what might have influenced his actions was if he wasn't so alone. He yearns terribly for female company. In in the course of his life, he only kissed women twice. You know, that's as far as he got physically, as he explains. And, And I mean, there's stories of, you know, masturbating, pretending that he's a woman to feel female energy, his desperation. Uh, uh, you know that level of loneliness that that yearning for the fem- for the female energy to counterbalance his angry sort of masculine traits if you will um and he writes about that and so i think um i think there's a there's a there's a part of him 
to me, he's not crazy. I don't, I don't see him as mentally ill. I see him as somebody who was um, extreme. You know, that's, that's the best I can explain it. And his, his motivation, so the humanity is certainly there just because he's a human being. You know, people are all humans. If you look, I mean, that's the job, obviously, as an actor. Um, and his motives for doing stuff, you know, were from a violence point of view, whereas for me, you know, people's motives for going to war have never really made sense to me personally, whether it's religion or land or, you know, even family or, you know, whatever, whatever their, their culture, um, gold, money, uh, oil, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Um, his was, I'm going, by the end was, I'm, I'm fighting for the planet. I'm fighting for human nature, for human beings. I'm fighting for nature and I'm fighting for animals. So it was as valiant, if there can be such a thing, reason to go to war as, as, as I've, I've come across, you know. Um, like, well, it's not, I don't agree with it, but I, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to, to make the argument. Well, and that was one thing that, um, and this is kind of for both of you, I, I liked how you kind of, you, you, you tread that line because mm -hmm. you can see um, it was sort of an, an, a mirroring of himself and the environment destruction because they're both heavily destructive entities, it turns out. And you captured that as you saw his kind of falling off into that darkness, but you saw the, the monsters with how he saw them. And I really, I liked that. And can you talk about that visually, uh, how you created that uh, imagery in the, in the film? Uh, sure. I mean, that, and that imagery um, sort of struck a chord with me, you know, when I was reading his diaries um, of his, you know, eco-sabotage, I was really familiar with the book Mon Monkey Wrench Gang, which started the whole activist group Earth First, um, which Ted Kaczynski tried to create correspondence with. And um, uh, so, you know, the imagery was just wanting to, you know, when you're in nature and you hear a machine, how, how interrupting it can be to the tranquility, you know? I've connected with my whole life. I grew up, you know, sometimes off the grid uh, for a large part of my life. And, um, you know, know what that intrusion feels like, you know? So there were parts of, Ted Kaczynski's story that you could relate to, you know, and I think as we're seeing environmental degradation around the planet and dealing with, you know, the looming climate catastrophe, you know, wanted to kind of capture that, um, you know, as clear as possible. Um, and, you know, using the machines as kind of, you know, an analogy to our larger problems, you know, the actual individual machines that are, that are in his backyard. So, um, yeah, I mean, part of it was just that, you know, the using sound and trying to capture the scale of these operations. And what's great when you're in Montana is that these, you know, these machines are there, the logging equipment is there. Um, so it was just a sort of matter of, of just, you know, uh, of, of filming the real thing, you know, and filming big fires and, you know, and, 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 and being in Montana, you have the sort of freedom to, you know, to just kind of do what you want as a filmmaker. You know, as opposed to all the restrictions you do kind of in, you know, filming in urban landscapes and things like that. So we kind of just let it rip in the woods and, you know, it was our own back lot. Got it. So my last question, because I know I'm about to lose you both, um, is you mentioned filming there in Montana. I was just curious how it was to be in that environment and to be around where this all sort of took place and how it affected you as a performer and bringing that realism to it. It was absolutely invaluable. I mean, we, you know, Tony put the cabin back on the exact feet. You could, they, they recreated everything in that cabin as close to the FBI photographs as possible. There were still Ted's possessions all over the property. You know, oh, there wow. were still old clothes, you know, in, the, in, his, in his cellar that he made, you know, you know that he'd used for, to, to like sort of line it and, and sort of insulate it. There were, there were, you know, piles of tin cans of food that he'd eaten. There was his irrigation system that he'd sort of made to help yeah. water his water, you know, you know his garden. Um, and, and the biggest, the most powerful thing of all was the nature. It was really being in that environment and just feeling the power of the, the tranquility. Um, and then, you know, and then you would have the odd plane flying over, you know, while you're having this amazingly tranquil moment. And you're like, wow, I can kind of sort of see how, and you can imagine he just he went there in the beginning just because he was like, OK, I just want to live off the grid. Just people leave me alone. I just want to live, you know, inspired by like Native American Indian culture and stuff. That's how he wanted to live. 
Got it. Well, guys, thank you so, so much. It was a beautiful film. Absolutely stunning. And uh, congratulations for making something like that. It just blew my mind. And again, Oscar, you, you have earned it again, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. And uh, bless you guys for, for making a great film and uh, success continue. Okay. Thank right. you so much, Jessica. Love you to talk to you. Same yeah. here. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.